Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today, we're going to be talking about the Alita box office and also why articles and why specifically the media cover movies so differently and why it is so important for us to try and expose those things and expose that nonsense for the world. You know, why it's important for us to continue to talk about these various topics, these people, these websites. And this is the reason why. Where it really all comes down to it. They like to lie. They love to spin, and they love to try and push agendas. Now, I'm going to try and show you two different articles side by side, both released on the same day, different authors but same publication, that both indicate something very differently from each other, even though both are based in reality. Here's one thing when I can say about Scott Mendelson. When Scott Mendelson actually dives into the actual numbers himself, he's usually pretty good. He gives the standards. He gives what other films have done previously. He is very good at being able to give historical relevancy. The problem that he has is that he way too often puts his own thoughts, his own subjective thoughts into things, including even the article's headlines, to the point where it's literally him trying to create clickbait so that more people will actually read his articles, and also, too, so that way he can try and spin a story and spin a movie in whatever direction that he wants. So here's my example. Let's just go by headlines for now. Alita Battle Angel Box Office. Why $400 million worldwide isn't big enough. This coming from the same person that was calling people trolls because they didn't like a movie. Okay, so as you see right here, pretty straightforward, why $400 million isn't enough. So I kind of want to see what he has to say about that and if there is indeed any merit to it. On the other hand, we have another article that was released today about Captain Marvel, where it says Captain Marvel positions Marvel for record-setting box office in 2019. But then when you dive deeper into the article, you realize, no, that's only because, of course, Endgame is going to probably make another $2 billion at the box office, and also whatever they get from Spider-Man, because obviously they're not going to get all of that since Sony still owns part of Spider-Man, that therefore it's going to possibly, possibly set records. But that record also is very deceptive. So when you read this article, what do you think? Oh, Captain Marvel is going to set records or is going to help Marvel set records. Here's the thing. Even at the modest estimates, what they're talking about here is overall gross in a given year for the MCU. And so what you're looking at potentially is it to be the second highest grossing year for the MCU. As opposed to last year, which of course was one of the largest because, you know, you had Infinity War that made over $2 billion. So they're trying to act like Captain Marvel is a huge part of that. I'm not going to deny that Captain Marvel's billion dollars is not going to help. However, please don't for a second think that it has nothing to do with Endgame and anything else coming out this year. And not just Captain Marvel. So again, as you see, there are obviously agendas here just in the, oh, Captain Marvel, we gotta talk about it. It's gonna be amazing. And let's just talk about how it's topping all these things and bringing all these things. Oh my gosh, Captain Marvel is gonna be 23rd, 26th of all time, highest grossing film. That has nothing to do with the actual overall MCU. But this video is mostly gonna be about Alita Battle Angel today. And that is because Scott Mendelson says and claims that $40 million is not big enough. Now, here's my own perspective before I dive into the article. That is indeed on its face true because based on estimates, this film needed to make around $430 million in order to break even, in order to hit that number so that anything it made past that point would essentially be pure profit because it only gets, studios only get around 60% of whatever the box office returns actually are because of dairy steel with various countries and theaters, etc. When you take that into account, $430 million covers not only its production budget, but also its supposed, and again, still very mysterious marketing budget, because most theaters, most rather movies, have a very mysterious, uncertain, unknown marketing budget. I mean, just go ahead and look to Captain Marvel. There are still many questions as to how much that, mo that the movie actually costs for marketing. Solo, too. Another lot of questions where, okay, how much did you actually spend on the production and also on the marketing for that film? So this is according to Scott Mendelson. This actually happened on Sunday, but it didn't become apparent until the final figures were released, with 20th Century Fox reporting 83.8 million domestic and 316 million overseas. Alita Battle Angel has passed $400 million at the global box office. The film is essentially finished in North America, China, and around the world, so the milestone is both noteworthy and bittersweet, meaning that $400 million is probably going to be uh, essentially the, the capstone, the last real milestone that it's going to break. As I said before, it's probably going to cap out at max 405 million dollars i don't even know if it has that much left in it but hey obviously there's still a lot of people passionate about it still going to see it in the end of its run and then he goes into the fact that he and many others under <laughs> underrated this movie even from their early projections despite pre-release tracking guesstimating a 25 million i love guesstimating a 25 million dollar five day launch over president's day weekend the rosa salazar anime adaptation scored a 42 million dollar thursday to monday launch and some pretty positive word of mouth alongside its mixed reviews as i said at the time fox deserved credit for selling the 170 million dollar budget of film not on the back of its never-before-seen fantasy worlds, but rather on the theoretical appeal of its title character. No, you see, here's what they were able to do. They were able to sell people by not only 
giving a trailer and giving a concept of the world, but also word of mouth. You want to know why this film, why Alita did so well? Because of word of mouth. You want to know why I saw it? It wasn't because of the trailers. I thought the trailers looked pretty bad. I honestly did not like the trailers. You want to know why I saw it? Because a bunch of people started to come to me and say, hey, dude, you should go see this movie. There's no identity politics in it. It's just a good movie, good story, well done. Go check it out. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to go check it out. And I loved it. And I've seen it twice. I saw it once in Dolby 3D. I saw it the second time in IMAX 3D. And I love this film. If I had more time in the day and more hours and more time to give, I would have seen this even more so. And trust me, I know there's plenty of people out there that have seen it that many times. So the reason why this did well is not necessarily because of necessarily anything Fox did, but because of James Cameron knowing how to reach out to the China's audience and because of obviously his own experience working with Avatar, but also too because of word of mouth. That's why the film did so well. It's funny too how they're like, oh, the, you know, the pre-release tracking, $25 million for a five-day launch. And yet Thursday to Monday instead made $42 million, almost doubling what that ex expectation was. That's the reason why I don't trust tracking. Pre-release tracking, box office tracking before you actually have ticket sales is a very, very unreliable game. That's why Solo had these record-breaking pre-ticket sales, but then ended up not really breaking any records and ended up losing money at the box office. That's the reason why I thought, honestly, that Captain Marvel was not going to be that successful because I was looking at the numbers and saying, hey, I, I remember hearing this story before with Solo Star Story. And also you see it happen in the opposite direction where movies are under estimated where movies like Alita for example are not given a whole lot of chance and therefore the well based on the numbers that we're getting 25 million sounds right and then the film is seen and the word is spread and the audience ratings are high and everything is is hyped up about it and it ends up making a lot more than it would actually should and so 40 million dollars I think is a very good accomplishment especially for a film that many people were writing off as a complete and total failure just even a week or two weeks before the film came out people were already signing the death note saying this was going to be the biggest flop potentially the biggest flop flop of 2019. Even though this film is by definition going to be a flop, at least theatrically, I don't think anyone is going to put this up here in the largest flop of 2019 category because there are still plenty of other movies to come out that have cost a lot more that probably will end up losing a lot more than this film in the long run did. So it's interesting though how you had all those articles saying about all these other things, but the film was not going to be successful. And yet the film has actually done pretty well, has done so much better. Imagine if this film had been given the same media attention, the same media protection as Captain Marvel was. Imagine if Scott Mendelson had been talking about trolls going after Alita Battle Angel, because guess what? There were people that were going after this film. There were not as many because obviously it was a smaller film. It was not in the narrative of the day, but who controls that? Oh, yeah, that's right, the media. The media did not cover it. Instead, they would rather have spent all their time and ink talking about Captain Marvel. And even still now, they're still talking about nonstop Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel. YouTubers are doing as well. And the reason why is because that's what, unfortunately, people are being drawn to these days. That's what people want to hear more about. And so imagine if that same attention had been given to this movie. Do you think it would have, you know, lost money? Do you think it only would have made $40 million? Of course not. Because if you give it that kind of a press and that kind of attention, guess what? More people are going to end up seeing it. But what did you do? You, you covered it as, as you would any other standard film, small, small fair standard film, said that, oh, it's not going to make money. Oh, it's going to be a bust. Oh, it's not tracking very well. And then when it outperformed, you said, oh, yeah, it's doing well, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be successful. And then even now, when it's crossed $400 million, which is a lot more than I think you or anyone else thought this film was actually going to do, you still say, oh, yeah, it's still not big enough. So you're still making excuses trying to say, oh, it's not good enough. It's not big enough. It's not, it's not reaching the potential. And then you try and lay out similar examples of other films that have reached certain things, but obviously have had also much larger losses at the box office than this film did. And then what is your overall result? What is what you think at the very end? You say Alita Battle Angel earned a solid $130 million in China. Had it performed up to snuff in most of the world, including critically North America, then yes, it would have been a hit. And yeah, we'd probably be seriously speculate, speculating about a sequel. Well, we already are speculating about a sequel, not because of box office numbers, but because of the passion of the fan base. Because not only do you have $400 million worldwide, which is vastly more than anyone else would have predicted. Again, I would <laughs> go seriously go back and check out what he was predicting very early on about this film. Not going to be even close to four hundred million dollars. So it's interesting how you're again still constantly making excuses for all these things. But now the film won't earn back two point four times its budget in its global theatrical. At a glance, Fox and Friends are getting back thirty three million from China, presuming a fifty fifty split everywhere else, and forty three million from North America, and around ninety three million from everywhere else. That gives the one hundred and seventy million dollar budget around one hundred and seventy million dollars. But of course, that does not include marketing, which is about fifty percent of that. So this film is going to end up being around thirty million dollars or so in the red. But as I said before. 
If you do based off of the 60% standard, then this film would have needed to make 430 million. If this ends around 405 million, guess, guess what that means? That's guess what that means it's going to do. It means it only needs to make $25 million in DVD sales. And here's where it says, and here is again what Scotty Boy tries to kind of bury in in the you know, we, look at all this other stuff he's writing. He buries this in there. But it did. So again, that would be a break even if the movie didn't have any marketing costs, but it did. So at best the movie may break even in post theatrical down the line. May break even may break even. Why do you use that kind of language when talking about films like this that don't support or don't endorse some political agenda that you want to get behind? But when it comes to movies like Captain Marvel, where you have the numbers in front of you and you know how the industry works, you say very clearly, it will. It is. It's guaranteed. It is this. You use factual language when you talk about certain films. And then when you talk about this, you say down the line, it only needs to make about $25 million up down the line. If you just go ahead and look to Solo A Star Wars Story, which is universally a movie that most people didn't even want to see, which is why it lost money at the box office, and also people didn't really buy it on Blu-ray either, think about a million units were sold, it still made around $30 million because of that on Blu-ray DVD. There are plenty of people that are planning to buy this movie as soon as it becomes available on digital, on 4K, on 3D, etc. Any single format that's going to be available, people are going to want to buy this movie. I've seen them. I've talked to them. <laughs> They're a passionate group. So if you don't think that they can get this film back its money down the line? Oh, it you know, could. At best, it may break even in post-theatrical down the line. Come on, Scott. Seriously. And this is the reason why I called you out on Twitter. This is the reason why I call you out for all these videos, because you make it very clear where you stand. If there's a movie that you support, you will use different types of language. And you see this happen all the time. Again, just look at this Captain, <laughs> Captain Marvel. Again, positions the Marvel record. So instead of MCU set for record-breaking year, what is the narrative set? What is the headline set? Captain Marvel positions. It's because of Captain Marvel. It's because of the wokeness. It's because of Brie Larson. It's because of all these things. Again, spinning the narratives, trying to explain it in all these different ways. You are not supposed to do that. People say, aren't you doing that all the time, Odin? I never claim to be some down the line, objective, uh, you know, media personality. I've never claimed to be a journalist. These are people writing for Forbes.com. This is the art section, contributor. This is, uh, when we look to uh, Scotty Boy, what is he in? The Hollywood Entertainment. This is not an op-ed. If this was an op-ed, then I would expect to see this type of pontificating. But because these are official pages, I don't want to see that. All I want to see is, okay, Scott, tell me about the numbers. Just do that, because he's very good when he actually sticks to the numbers. But when he has a narrative, again, going back all the way to when he was calling everyone trolls for not liking Captain Marvel, boom. The language is very clear. When you have this dude right here trying to say that the MCU is going to potentially break records, even though he makes clear saying if the, you know, assuming that Endgame does as well as Infinity War and assuming that they get a certain cut from a Spider-Man that it does as well, you're looking at, you know, most likely a scenario where it's the second best MCU opening or rather the second best MCU year of all time. So again, record setting box office. MCU could potentially break records this year at the box office. Not only does that make me more likely to want to read it, but also it's just more honest. Instead, you throw Captain Marvel in the title, and so then you decide to dedicate several, several lines talking nonstop, nonstop and nothing else about Captain Marvel and how much money you think it's going to make. So that way you can spin your narrative and post your pictures and all this other stuff about Captain Marvel is going to take everything away. It's going great and everything's awesome. While Alita Battle Angel's like, I could make it down the line. No, oh, yeah, it could, it could end up making its money back down the line, maybe. No, how, how about instead you start to step back, realize that you're supposed to be an objective voice on these various topics and stick to it. Again, let people like me, let the op-ed sections, let those things go off on these directions and on these agenda-driven things. Don't you dive into it because the further you dive into it, the smaller your credibility becomes. And as I said from the beginning, the one thing that I want to try and do is I want to try and just move past all of the nonsense I want to read articles like this and say, here is what is being said. Here is the agenda. You might not be able to see the agenda, but again, Alita, not big enough. MCU, possible. Maybe getting a record-setting year. Maybe because of Captain Marvel. There are agendas. Just even in the titles alone, let alone going and diving into the actual text. Anyway, guys, this is indeed the update. So $40 million worldwide is apparently not big enough for Scott Mendelson. It may make its money back down the line, but who knows? No, again, you can easily, because you know the numbers and you know how films do post the process and you know, you even admitted that there was good word of mouth and that a very strong, oh, there were mixed reviews on it. When it comes to the audiences, the audiences love this movie. Even that cinema score that all of you talk about all the time, it still got, it still got an A from that. Got an A minus, I think technically. Oh God, an A minus. Oh, Captain Marvel got an A. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about cinema score if you really want to. 
But this film did well because of word of mouth. This film will continue to do well because of word of mouth. This film will, not may, will have a life of its own on DVD, Blu-ray, digital. And it will make its money back. This is not a May situation. This is a guarantee. The fact that it's been able to make this much money and it's still making money and it's likely to top off around four and five million, the closer it gets to 430, the less it needs to make back post-process. There are enough avenue streams, revenue streams rather, that it's going to have at its access to be able to make that money back. It's just sad that you gave this movie no chance at all. You wrote this movie off, and you even admit saying, oh yeah, we didn't think it was going to do that well. You wrote this off from the very beginning, from day one, when all of you and all your friends were talking about how this film was going to lose record-breaking money. All the while, you were writing article after article after article, protecting, protecting, shilling, all because of Captain Marvel, all because it fit your agenda. You're right, Alita doesn't fit your agenda. And that's why so many people love it. Because people don't want to go see a movie that's driven by and protected by an agenda. People want to go see a movie with great characters, with great stories, and Alita has that in strides. And Captain Marvel could not even tie the bootstraps of Alita Battle Angel because of that difference. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, smash that like button. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe. You're all amazing, beautiful people. I know that you've been wanting some more Alita stuff some more box office stuff, less Captain Marvel, but obviously I think this is important because there are two major narratives that have been going on, you know, especially on my channel, because I've been talking a lot about Alita, a lot about Captain Marvel, and I think it's important for us to know these differences that exist, and how they cover it, and how even in these non-op-ed sections, they want to try and get a narrative out there, and it's important for us to try and dig through all of the BS, and see the narrative that they're trying to push, and more importantly, why they're trying to push it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.